Gotta relax. This is Earth Radio. And now here's human music. Hmm. Human music. I like it. Gotta relax. This is Earth Radio. And now here's human music. Hmm. Human music. I like it. Gotta relax. This is Earth Radio. 
radio. And now here's human music. Huh. Human music. I like it. Gotta relax. This is Earth Radio. And now here's human music. Huh. Human music. I like it. Unmute my own microphone and get this goddamn show on the road. Shall we? Yeah! Cut the music and switch over to Revs Palaver. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. How's everyone doing today? It is uh, the last day of the month, so that's uh, July, Monday, July 31st. I hope everyone is doing as great as I am. Uh, I'm going to be looking a little off-center for camera, so that way it actually looks like I'm looking at you, Bex. Uh, how are you doing tonight, sweetie? I'm doing all right. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. Hope And I, 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 trust, uh, I trust a lot of the people in chat to let me know if there is a problem with the audio. They're, they're always real good about that. Geekonomicon especially, who just got done playing Portal, so he knows that the cake is a lie. Oh... Me and Vince just played Portal 2 in co-op mode. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Portal is life. Portal is love. So real quick, for those of you, those watching who may be newer to my channel and haven't caught you on one of the previous um, palavers, why don't you just tell us a real little bit about yourself, whatever you'd like to say or however you'd like to introduce yourself. Um, I am a younger gamer person uh, <laughs> i work in finance uh well, i met rev playing mmos and we've known each other for like three years now i don't know <laughs> yeah it's gone by really fast so so yeah. i would i would describe bex as this she's one of the nicest sweetest people uh i've ever known and um she's all sweetness and sugar and light until she hits that point where she's like, this motherfucking <laughs> game is cheating! <laughs> and, uh, That's pretty accurate. 
<laughs> that's a truly wonderful time to behold. And uh, I, I, I was telling her just before we went live, I said, I actually see her every single day because her Christmas card that she sent me is still hanging on my fridge. With me and Kit Lee, my cat. Also, I'm a crazy cat lady, so. <laughs> you are a crazy cat lady, but uh, you are now living with uh, your boyfriend that you met on Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and uh, also, you got lightning fast inner tubes that make me jealous. When are you going to start streaming again? As soon as I. I thought about doing it without a second monitor, but. I really like being able to see the chat and interact, so I would like to buy that first. And they're relatively cheap. Pretty much once I pay this Amazon credit card bill, <laughs> I'm going to order a matching monitor to the one I have now. So you can always, pretty soon. You can always do what Akila does, which is she only has the one monitor, and then she just pulls up the Twitch app on her phone and then just reads chat. Up. Like, she just has that sitting in front of her to read chat. Yeah. Just, just saying. Yeah. You know. Maybe, but I'm really, I'm really impatient, so I'll probably just buy a monitor here the next like week or so. I, I feel you. And uh, just let me just say a quick hello to uh, some of the viewers that have tuned in. Of course, you know Hazmat. You've known Hazmat as long as you've known me, uh, me. Hello, Wake Up Aaron, Hi. Geekonomicon. Always good to see you. And Impulse Skin, good to see you, uh, brother. Um. So I know you. Well, you know how quick these podcasts can go. Right, mm -hmm. hour in the blink of the eye. I want to get <laughs> especially when we're talking about Mass Effect. <laughs> and I want to get right into it, Mass Effect Andromeda. So last week I finally beat the game because I was like, all right, I gotta beat this before I can talk to Bex. Because I kept harassing you to beat it. I was like, you can't have a final judgment until you beat it. <laughs> well, uh, I beat it. So can I now give my judgment, or do you want to give yours first? Um, I I can give mine since mine's more well known i guess i don't okay. know um i enjoyed the game i think it is a solid six out of ten but when you compare it to the mass effect trilogy especially as a whole um even if you're just comparing first games of trilogies uh it just doesn't even come close but i i'm not i'm gonna stop myself before i go on tangent mode uh but it's a solid game i enjoyed it I was disappointed, though. Yeah. I think that was the big thing for me. I, I, I When I first started playing, I said 8 out of 10. Like, I was able to look past a lot of the flaws in the game when I first started playing it. But they keep those flaws keep stacking up. They don't stop. Yeah. And by the time you're done with the game, you're like, okay, 6 out of 10. Like, it's better than average, but not by much. Um, yeah. And the problem is there's so many good aspects to the game that the flaws that it does have stand out so much stronger. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you compare it to other, like, you know, popular series. Like, something that happened with me, as soon as I finished a beat Andromeda, I started my full playthrough of Witcher 3, which is a two-year-old... It's, it's old, two years older than Mass Effect Andromeda. And I was just like, oh, this makes me depressed. <laughs> it's not even fair. <laughs> Did someone poison your drink? No, there's a weird noise. Oh, it's my seltzer bottle. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was, you don't understand. I, I doubt that anyone could hear it. It was a super high-pitched squealing, and it was the... Yes, but I did hear you. Compared to Mass Effect 3, or I'm sorry, Witcher 3... Which is several years older. Like, it's almost two years older. Mm -hmm. it, just the difference in quality between Mass Effect Andromeda and Witcher, it, it's like... It doesn't make sense to me. Like, they had a solid amount of development time, too. It's not like, you know, for example, like, Dragon Age 2 was a rushed-out development um, it only had, like, I think a year and a half. It had a very short development time. And you could see that through how, you know, recycled areas, blah, 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 blah. But they had a, a, a good amount of development time, and it was just, it. they just, I don't even know what they were thinking. <laughs> but, 
There's so many elements that make me sad. Well, um, Zale says it seems like Mass Effect uh, Andromeda was a money grab. It was unpolished and released on a deadline and not a uh, quality assurance level. And I think that that... I think that that sums up my personal experience with the game. Like, I could forgive the poor facial animations compared to games like Witcher. Like, I could forgive that. Mm -hmm. I could forgive, um, you know, maybe that some of the dialogue wasn't the best. You know, like, my face is tired. Uh, that scene is so... Have they, I haven't played it since they patched. Have they, like, fixed how cringy that scene is? Like, where her face doesn't fucking move? No. In fact, I watched someone doing a first playthrough of it, and I I, I watched them for about twenty minutes or so, and they just they happened to come across that scene, and I was like, "Oh my god, her eyes look better, but that's it. It's literally uh, just it's, as bad." It's like I'm t my face is tired, and I think and I, I like, even even more sorry, than my, she did. <laughs> I'm sorry, my face is tired. It's like, ugh. but. Like, I can look past those problems if it weren't for things that absolutely positively never should have made it into a, the, the final version of the game. Like, there were some bugs that they fixed. Um, like, there was an infinite loop, experience loop, that people could use. And I did it, and I just, like, I got, like, five levels in, mm -hmm. in like, a matter of, like, six minutes by just running in a circle around a rock. That's literally <laughs> all you had to do. Or, if you didn't feel like running in a circle... Like, you just boost forward, boost backward, boost forward, boost backward, boost forward, boost, and that's all you had to do. And every time you did it, you would get experience for completing a quest. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It just, and like, all these little bugs like that, they shouldn't have been in a live game. Not a AAA blockbuster $70 plus dollar game. You know? Yeah. I, I think the thing that probably because oh, so there was some things I enjoyed I don't want it to sound like I'm just shitting on the game because like I said it was a good game I enjoyed it I won't play it again which is one of my biggest is one of the biggest factors I think I brought up when I was telling you I was like it is not a, I, I do not like it because if I really like especially RPG games because of their replay value, I immediately start my second playthrough and make my other character that I'm going to make all the opposite decisions to see what kind of stuff is different. And I had zero drive to do that with Andromeda because nothing would have been different. <laughs> like, it, nothing would have changed. No con no different consequences because nothing you decided mattered. <laughs> let me... Let me ask you a question. I don't know how much you played and how much... Like, what was your completion rate at the end of Mass Effect Andromeda? I was relatively high. I don't I don't think it was as high as yours, but I think I was in the 90s. I was at 54% complete. Because I was full completioning everything on the first two planets. And then that's mm -hmm. when... When I got to the third planet with the pirates, that's mm -hmm. when it hit me like, oh. Yeah, it's grindy as fuck, but I played it until I didn't have any missions. Yeah, see, I didn't do that. So I only got 54% complete. So let me ask you this. Did you ever find the Asari arc? Yes. I didn't. Do you want to know what it probably changed in the game? Nothing. I can't imagine what it would have changed. Like, that's the way the plot is. Um, you know, and this is going to be a little spoilery for anyone who's working on the game or whatever, but... It's been out for a while. Yeah, Spoilers. you've had time. <laughs> um... Like, the only thing I can imagine that happening is in the last sequence, in the last mission, the final mission, mm -hmm. when all of your allies are showing up. Yeah, that's basically what it was. Like, maybe there would have been Asari Commandos, too. But then the other thing, too, is some of them didn't make any sense. So, like, I went to the pirate planet, and I went through the main story quests, but at no point did I ever go back to Sloan and, like, make friends with her. Like... You you can. There's yeah. a mission where you can. But I didn't. And so and then she... it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, but so then she shows up in the final mission and she's like, let's go, Pathfinder. And I'm like, why are you here? Like, don't we hate each other? What are you doing? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it makes no sense. Yeah. And and it... that that is... That is indicative of the largest problem that I have with the game, which is the Mass Effect series previous to this where you make choices and the choices at least give you the illusion that they matter. And people die depending on the choices you make. And, it, like, 
I am not saying you should be able to like kill everybody. It's it's more that there should be consequences to actions and like what you do. Like there's an option. Um, it's like one of the like it's when you're saving that like matriarch chick of the other alien race that I'm talking about. Yep. And you have the option to shoot this guy or not. You know, like. Yep. And it's it's supposed to be like one of those like classic Mass Effect. You, you're on a timer. You've got to make a decision. Literally, that does nothing. Like it doesn't it no. doesn't mean anything. <laughs> no, nope. it never it never gets brought back. It never gets brought up again. She like her response to your action happens doesn't right matter. then, and, and then it that's doesn't it. Doesn't matter either. And there's like, another part saved her and she was just kind of a cunt to me the rest of the game but in the end she's like my people will still help you so yeah. it's like okay <laughs> well she's kind of a cunt no matter like what your choice is because i think i did the thing that she wanted and she was still kind of bitchy like because then it was like well you know maybe that was the wrong choice it's like all right so it doesn't matter what it's just and then it happens again later when you're on the Ket ship, and you have to choose between saving the Talarians that have helped you on that mission, in theory. Like, they mm -hmm. don't actually help you. Just storyline, they've helped you. Yeah. Or the Krogans that you've had nothing to do with. Like, oh, there's some Krogan stasis pods. So you're like, well, I'm going to go help the people that I guess, in theory, have been helping me. Yeah. And then Drax gets all mad how could you save more Turians and let my people die? It's like, well, dude, they were in stasis pods. I don't even know if they were alive. Like, you know, like, and then he's like, I'll never forget this. And that's the last you hear of it. And literally nothing happens. Like, no. it's, I wish it was like, it, like in older Mass Effect games where if you pissed off certain companions enough, there was a point in conversation where they were going to walk out unless you pass like a persuade check or an intimidation check or something to keep them on your squad. Mm -hmm. Or there was even an option to, like, kill them or, like, not even recruit them. That was not even a thing in this game, which I think also kind of circles around kind of to ha how you can't control your companions at all in combat. Like, you can't, like, I miss that. Like, I did really enjoy parts of Andromeda's combat because being able to jump in a Mass Effect game blew my mind for the first, like, Three or four hours I played the game. Mm -hmm. It does get a little old. But, um, like, just not being able to, like, set up things. Like, have, you know, Liara throw out Singulation and me throw out my Shockwave. And, like, there's just, there's no cohesion. Like, they're just, they really feel, you feel, it. I think it adds to being, like, the detachment you feel from your companions. Which is one of the things we argued about. <laughs> well, it, do it does. It feels a lot more like you're going on every mission single player than anything else. Like, occasionally, if you choose this person, you might see Liam throwing a grenade. Or if you <laughs> choose Korra, you might see her biotic charge. In. But, like, you don't feel like you're a team in any way. You no. really do feel like you're much more playing solo than being on a the commander of a three-man squad. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll tell you... I don't, I don't want to jump around too much, but I also, at the same time, I don't want to harp on any one point. Yeah. <laughs> but you said that was one thing that we disagreed about earlier. One of the last times we talked, we were talking about Mass Effect Trilogy. Mm -hmm. And um, you brought up that in Mass Effect 2, you can actually romance Jack. Not just have sex with Jack, but romance her if you do mm -hmm. the right choices. And I'm like, I've played Mass Effect 2 probably five or six times and I never knew that. Yeah, it blew my mind. You were like, you could have a full romance. I was like, yes. And it's actually very, like, her character development is, like, when you romance her, is like a totally, you see a totally different, like, soft Jack side. And it's it really adds to her character's, like, that, I don't know, I really, Jack's one of my favorites. Jack is also one of my favorite characters. But the point I wanted to bring up is we were talking about how it feels like none of your choices matter. Mm -hmm. Like, I was blown away that there was this aspect in Mass Effect 2 that I played this game from start to finish at least half a dozen times, and I still hadn't experienced that. I still hadn't figured that part out. I still hadn't done that part. And I, I think I've, play, other than one time, I always play as male rider, right? Mm -hmm. So, playing through Mass Effect Andromeda, 
I am willing to say, other than the parts I skipped over, I don't feel like I missed anything. Like, I feel like everything was out there. It, like, did you do all the loyalty missions? Nope. Did, why? Why? Why bother? <laughs> they don't matter. It's not like in Mass Effect 2, where if you don't do that loyalty mission, the chances of dying just keep going up. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the loyalty missions yeah. literally just unlock their final skill. So what? As we previously were just talking about, they don't really matter in combat. No. And, uh, now rolling into combat, this is another thing. I think another big flaw that Mass Effect Andromeda had was Sam letting you switch your professions. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand why they did it. Like, it's kind of a new thing. But I feel like it kind of ruins the RPG element of the game. If you can't, you know, identify as... I'm an engineer, I'm a biotic, I'm a soldier, because, and I think that comes through in the story and the dialogue, because you don't have anything, you can't have anything specific to that, because you're not. You're everything. Yep, yeah. I mean, in, in the other previous Mass Effect games, you chose your class, and it didn't matter if you were a soldier or a biotic or an engineer. It didn't matter. The storyline played out the same way. But because you were locked into that one class, you felt a certain identity to your character. Like, okay, I'm an engineer. I have to hang back. I have to let, you know, I, I, I you know, Rex is really good because he's the one that charges into combat. You know, I like Rex and I like Liara because that gives the, the, the combat, the biotics, mm -hmm. and then I bring the tech. Yeah. But when you can bring everything on your own, that again further separates you from your squad. Like Yeah, cuz you don't it's like I don't I don't need my consistent squad to support me to help me be the best in combat cuz I'm the best at everything in combat. <laughs> yeah. And Bisk says you can't even hack anything, so if being an infiltrator yeah, and hack true. I didn't realize there's there's there was no like mini games to what well, there was like two different ones. Right? In Mass Effect? Or am I thinking of another game? In Andromeda, there was one mini game, which was like the alien version of Sudoku. Where you had oh, to... yeah, when you're solving the... That was... I, I enjoyed that mini game. But, like... I, I liked it, too. But then, even with the most recent patch, they made you it available that you could just buy the keys that just automatically solved it. Like, I never used those keys. Because I was like, no, this is fun to do the mini game. Yeah. And then... Once you get past a certain point, you never get those puzzles anyways. Like... Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I will say there are certain things about the game I really loved. I loved the freedom of movement in combat. I feel like the way that the cover system worked was a lot more akin to Mass Effect 1, which was I far preferred to 2 and 3. Mm -hmm. You know, just sort of that there's no snap to cover. It's just you want cover, then hide behind something. You know? Yeah. Um, and I love the jetpacks. I love the mobility in combat. I felt like that really... It really translated well in terms of gameplay. My favorite thing to do... I maxed out my, like, levitation. Because I was... I, mean, I was mostly biotic. So I would be able to, like, jump and then hold myself up there and, like, snipe from above and then jump that back down into cover when I was done. That was so cool. And as soon as I found out that was a thing you could do, I was like, I have to do that. That was, like, one of the only things I had in the soldier, like, thing. See, now, I, I've always loved the Vanguard class. Like, I liked it even in Mass Effect 1 before they massively revamped it for 2 and 3. And mm -hmm. then I loved it in 2 and 3. Um, so I went very heavy Vanguard build. And uh, I actually played them almost more like an adept version of... Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, That's kind of the, the lean I went to as well. Because I've played Vanguard and In-Depth. Like, those are the classes I've played the most. And um, that's kind of how it felt to me as well. That I think in that just kind of lent towards how you picked a class, too. Because you couldn't really, you know, you picked more abilities that were not Vanguard because you could. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, I mean, by the end of the game, it was like every combat. And then, like, that final mission, it wasn't even hard. Because I had built up, like, there was no need to ever switch classes. There was no need to use anything but this ultimate combo I built up, which is mm -hmm. start with the singularity, throw a psionic blast, whatever it is, the biotic blast, mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. you know, lance or whatever the it's lance, called. Lance, yeah. Charge in one or two shots with the with my uh, remnant shotgun that never ran out of ammo if they were almost dead. If they weren't, start meleeing. And I could take on anything just by hitting the melee key as much as possible because I gained barrier every time I hit something. Yeah. The only thing that was challenging were like the the things that would pick you up and bite you in half or the the ascendants that would put you in an orb and crush you and if you were in melee range they would one hit you. My little favorite thing was like the death field that like pulsed around you and it primed anything in that area it primed so I would have that and I would anybody that was close to me I would lance or like biotic punch. And I basically I was almost entirely melee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the melee is very powerful in that game. And I I did like the inclusion of several different melee weapons. Like, it felt very different using the Asari Warsword, which is what I primarily used, than yeah, it did like the that. Omnic Blade or the Krogan Hammer. Mm -hmm. um, I never used the other weapons. Like, there was a Cryo Glove that was Remnant. I never used that. Or I never used the Ket weapon. Mm -hmm. But um, the Krogan Hammer was a lot of fun. It felt slow and powerful. Yeah. You know, I it, like the Asari, but sword but it like felt like it took so long to like like reset after you do the dramatic slash i i did use it though that was the most yeah but the advantage is while you were teleporting you couldn't get hurt mm -hmm. so between that and the fact that my melee would regenerate my shields i i was basically invincible yeah. um those guys that had the gatling laser guns the cat that would just you know fire the gatling laser at you yeah all I had to do was rocket boost in the air, charge down on top of them, and then that would stagger them, and then I'd just start meleeing. And then they'd start firing, but as long as I was, the, as long as I was in the middle of a melee animation, mm -hmm. I wasn't getting hurt. So, you know. Bisk says, uh, I did double damage on every shot until stealth wore off. Everything died before stealth wore off. I think that some of the combos were a little ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I crafted a Black Widow sniper rifle just for those times when I had to take out things like Ascendants, and I mm -hmm. couldn't get in melee range safely. So yeah, you know, I'd sit there and snipe with my sniper rifle until I dropped the orb, then same old combo, charge in, melee, melee. It, it, did, it just didn't feel very dynamic. Um, there were some yeah. things, like I said, I loved the mobility in combat, but yeah, for the most part, pretty disappointing, I thought. Yes, but... Like I said, the combat was one of one of my favorite parts. If I had to, like pick things that were good in the game, I enjoyed the combat. The thing that disappointed me the most was the story overall, and the, like like we've kind of already talked about the lack of anything you doing mattered. Like when I got so the so it was like the beginning. I was like hype, 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 and then once you get to the first desert planet, I was kind of like. Oh, this is gonna be repetitive. <laughs> and then it's basically that feeling until you get towards like you know the end crucial missions, and then it started to kind of go back up until the end. And I was like, "Well, nothing changed. Nothing mattered." <laughs> no, at no time. And like, I felt like there was this manufactured artificial sense of like drama, like. Yes. I'm going around and I'm doing these <laughs> missions and they feel like they should be kind of important. Like, they feel like, okay, I need to do this, I need to do this. And then all of a sudden it's like, we're going to take the fight to them. Are you ready? Like, are you ready to embark on final mission? You're like, oh, oh, I guess so. And then yeah. Ryder gives a speech. We're going to get all of the allies. And, and you're like... Derpy speeches that Ryder gives trigger yeah. me like no other. <laughs> yeah, and then like... Just like, oh, well, I can control the... Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh. <laughs> I can't believe I almost forgot this. Talking about the story, I got so sick of, for lack of a better term, AI space magic. Like, yeah, R Ryder can control the remnant. Why? Because <laughs> Sam? Yeah. <laughs> like, is it... Because he has he has a biotic implant, like he has an implant in his head that's connected to an AI. Like how does how does that work? No, don't 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 ask that kind of a question. Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. 
But then he loses control of Sam, but he can still do it, but now it gives him a nosebleed. It's oh. very tense, Rev. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's very tense. And and also somehow his sister who was in a coma for ninety five percent of the game. I really feel like they wasted that potential of like it was such a cool thing to have like a sibling that a you could customize like you you controlled how they looked which is a change from you know your character has a sibling in um, Dragon Age two um, they're far more in the game than your sibling in Andromeda but anyway I just felt like that was a waste like they could have at least have more conversations you had like what five, five and then they expected you to care when her life was at, or his life was at stake you're just kind of like yeah no I don't really care <laughs> you, you really the most interaction you have with them is during like cutscenes like flashback cutscenes almost mm -hmm. like when you're unlocking your father's memories and you, you see your father talking to your sibling, mm -hmm. like, that feels more connection than anything you actually have with your sibling in-game. Yeah. I, I get the idea that they wanted to make sure that you knew that you were the hero and not your sibling, but there's mm -hmm. no reason why you're, the, 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 the sibling couldn't have been in a coma for the first, like, planet. And then when you get back from Eos, the fir like, yeah. once you get back from the first planet... It's like, oh yeah, she's all better now, but since she's not connected to Sam, she's not the Pathfinder, but now she's going to perform a critical role and she's going to be the lia uh, liaison on the Nexus. Like, they, they could have done 150,000 things with them. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, she could have been your Oracle in the Batcave. Like, could have yes. been dope, but no. And can we just talk about those memory missions for a second and get real spoilery? Sure. We can do whatever did you, you want to do. Did you finish? Did you finish that? No, I list? got like I would say sixty-six percent of them done. I got all, again. I got every single one on the first two planets. I got one or two on the pirate planet, and then it was all just I want to get this game over with as quick as possible. So but please, are you okay spoilers away. It? Spoilers okay, away. Okay, so before I say anything, anybody that's watching, this is a spoiler for that storyline quest. So if you haven't finished it or you plan on doing it, don't listen to what I'm about to say. Um, so. Basically, the end of it culminates with there's this mystery person that nobody knows who it is, is who financed this. And, like, the last one is them talking about something that's coming to Earth, and, like, Earth is in danger. And you're like, oh, Reapers! Hype, 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 hype! And then it, like, kind of just ends. And, like, obviously they kind of allude, I think, possibly the elusive man being the, or, you know... Cerberus being the financier for Andromeda Initiative. Um, but they just totally end it, and it's obviously a ploy to set up a DLC. Yep. Which pissed me off. Because <laughs> it was one of the most interesting storylines in the game. And I thought that's the reason we got to pick the sex of our shepherd, male or female. I played the, I played the max of what I thought the game was. And I never encountered any mention of my shepherd gender, yay or nay. If anybody else did, I would love to know how you got to see that. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you exactly when it was. Very early, one of the very first things that happens when you, when you start playing the game. Um, someone mentions shepherd, like uh, your father worked with shepherd. And they're like, oh, she was a great war hero. Uh, I probably just didn't even, that probably just didn't even register on my radar. It was and, so, because I do remember, because your dad's an N7, and they were like, oh, Shepard. <laughs> as far as I can tell, that was it. That was the only reference I saw to Shepard, and the only reason you would need to pick Shepard's gender. Be, and say what Shepard's gender was, was so that they could get the right pronoun. I was hoping, like, hope upon hope, that that whole mission was going to lead to, because they basically, the whole time, it was like, it got more and more alluded to that fact. Um, but in the end, it just set up for a DLC. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? I hate to say it, but I think a lot of the problems that came out with Andromeda were because Bioware did not have the time that they needed to finish the game because Electronic Arts said, no, this is the release date. This is when it's going to be done by. 
and they pushed out a game that felt like it was still in beta, and that, again, drives home the point that I don't buy DLC for the Mass Effect games. I think that EA's pricing point for their DLC is downright criminal. Mm -hmm. I think that they've released plenty of content in the past that... It's like, how are they justifying $25 for this DLC? You yeah. Know what I mean? Like, they're justifying almost the price of a AAA... Like, you can buy a AAA game for 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. How How are they justifying this? And they're like, because fuck you, it's Mass Effect, you're going to buy it. They also... Another blatant DLC setup was at the end of the game when you finished. Because you still haven't found the Corian, um Drell, their, that arc. Okay. And you go and talk to somebody, and they're like... Oh, we found it, but they said to stay away. And it's just like, okay, so another fucking DLC setup. This is fucking bullshit. Like, no, 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 no. Why did you do this? Why did you do this, Bioware? Yeah. I mean, I know we're shitting on it a lot. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't my intention because overall I did enjoy it. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, I give it a 6 out of 10 personally. Yeah. There were some aspects I liked. I really liked the mobility in combat. Um, I really liked the feeling that it had of exploration. I felt like that was really neat. The first okay. planet that I landed on, Eos, I went over every fucking square inch of that. I mined every resource. I found yeah. everything there was. The second planet, I'd say probably 95% of the planet, same thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I really liked driving the uh, Nomad. I yeah, thought the Nomad... I thought the gnome, the way the nomad, especially once you started um, uh, upgrading it, and like you could unlock, um, like the traction control. Did you ever unlock the traction control on it? Oh yeah, all the time. Oh, then it was so much fun. Like that yeah. was so great. You could you actually could get to the point where you could power slide off of a cliff, and if you hit their boosters at the right time, like you could make these insane jumps and then land and. Uh, yeah, great. that one planet where there's like no gravity. That was one of my, and it, it's like a, it, I think it was only for um, Vetra story mission and maybe like one other thing. Maybe, because I don't know what planet you're talking about. Oh, it was so fun. It was like no gravity. So you like, you hit boost and then you just float like, and there's this giant like gap and like everybody tries to jump it, but you can't, but you can jump a lot of really good that's like one of the most fun planets, and it's it was just for I think Vetra's loyalty mission. Mm. So swing and a miss. And I did all the loyalty missions. None of them really like made me endear to the characters anymore. There is like I I don't I can't say that I okay I I don't I hate Liam. I don't like his character. I enjoyed his loyalty mission because of it was. It was a, it was much more like, dying like because you kind of like get turned on your side and all kinds of crazy things, and that was fun. But like him as a character, I do not like. But whereas I can say that I hate Jacob and Miranda in Mass Effect Two, and I don't think I hate. I think, but then there's I think apathy is worse than hate. Like if. If a character, you hate them, it's, you're interested in enough in, like, who they are as a character not to care about them. But, like, with Andromeda, I'm apathetic towards almost all the characters. Like, I could care less their story development. I couldn't, because it's boring, and it's, it's just not interesting to me. Well, I feel completely apathetic about Jacob. Like, when you said Jacob and Miranda, if you hadn't said, if you had said, from the original trilogy, I hate Jacob, I'd be like, who's Jacob? Literally. I can never remember who Jacob is. He's so <laughs> completely forgettable, and I just don't have any thoughts about him at all. He's just a nothing character. It's I like, oh yeah, the black like dude he with the acne. Stereotype right. a little bit, and that's a little bit like not okay. But <laughs> Miranda, <laughs> I hate. Miranda, I hate. I will say that. Um, yeah, I just I feel like this was a big swing and a miss. Um, I feel like. Bioware was really put under the time crunch from EA and that's that's the I think that's one of the big differences between The Witcher 3 and Mass Effect Andromeda we keep making that comparison it's a really yeah, good comparison you think about the time between Witcher 2 and Witcher 3 <laughs> and they pushed back the release date on Witcher 3 several times 
Mm -hmm. Like, it was supposed to be out, I think. Andromeda did get pushed back once, which gave me hope, because I was like, okay, they're not trying to rush this, they're going to do it right. Mm -hmm. I would like to know why they pushed it back. It's probably for their fucking multiplayer bullshit, which the multiplayer was relatively fun. I played with you and Lorna a couple times, but it's like, that's not why I buy games like Mass Effect. If I want to do that kind of game, like, there's Overwatch, there's CSGO, there's Siege, there's there's sh first person shooters like you don't need to put that kind of stuff and focus so much energy into those games but they do because microtransactions <laughs> yeah um well i i just gotta read this captain fluffy says i feel like if i ask real cute and nicely i don't need that sub I'm not sure what she means by that but you're probably right i'm i'm a sucker for anyone who asks me anything um so one of the biggest criticisms that mass effect 3 got was that by playing the multiplayer, you would actually make the single that player. That infuriated me. That triggered me. I was. All, I'm. I'm not usually a forums warrior person, but I was <laughs> because I was so mad I couldn't get the indie where Shepard's hand twitched because I didn't do the multiplayer. But you could though. You could. You absolutely 100% could get full completion and never touch multiplayer you just had to do everything right like you had to do everything I, I, right i had to kill rex on vermeer to get it everything like get that uh did you i don't know I but anyways because so, i feel like all my other decisions were right well anyways my point was that was a hugely criticized thing that oh why is multiplayer affecting single player that's a mistake but now that I played Andromeda, and Andromeda's multiplayer is good. I mean, it's it's great. It feels like it feels like Mass Effect Andromeda. It's good squad based multiplayer. I like it. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is if you don't have a four man team, you're fucked. Like if you go in with even three, you're probably <laughs> like, not when, like when we went in and did threes. I think that yeah. I don't even know if we ever had a full team when I played with you guys. No, I wish they would adjust the difficulty for how many people you're playing with. That way, if you wanted to just play with your one friend, you could. Yeah. yeah. But they didn't. Well, that's the only criticism I have about Mass Effect multiplayer. But I never really felt the urge to play it because nothing you did in the multiplayer affected the single player, and I would have liked to have seen something. Like, I would have liked to see if you could transfer those credits over, or if things that you did on that strike, you know, multiplayer could give you strike team loot boxes or something in-game. Like, anything. Like, they <laughs> never felt like there was any sort of reason to play multiplayer other than, hey, I want to play multiplayer. Yeah. So, even though that was a major criticism for the third game, um, they took it out for Andromeda, and I feel like that made the game suffer. Or the multiplayer suffer, I should say. Yeah, I never played the Mass Effect. Well, I tried one time to play the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, and I get real spastic in first-person shooter situations, especially when I don't know what I'm doing, which is most of the time. And I, like, queued it. And this was, like, months after the game had come out, so everybody knew what they were doing, and I just, like, immediately quit. I was like, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. <laughs> well, I played quite a bit of Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. I thought it was real. Mass Effect 3 multiplayer was really good. And the level design in Mass Effect 3 multiplayer was better than Andromeda multiplayer because the maps in Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer were very small but had a high verticality to them. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Mass Effect 3, they were much more spread out. But obviously, no verticality because that's not the way Mass Effect 3 was designed. You know? Yeah. I'm, I'm concerned that basically the, the thing, so I'm a huge Mass Effect fan, but the thing that got me, besides Knights of the Old Republic, that got me into, you know, Bioware games and stuff was I first played Dragon Age Origins, and they've just, uh, well, not really officially announced, but they've been hiring people at, uh, I think it's... Bioware or Montreal, I don't know. They're hiring for the next um, Dragon Age game, basically. Um, and I enjoyed Inquisition, and I know you didn't play that either. But Just Origin is the only one I played. Which and it faced a lot of criticism, um, but I I enjoyed it a lot. Like the story and the and that's another thing. The graphics and stuff in that game, facial animations, character custom, like looks amazing to me, and like. 
Like, how did they go so far? People were saying that the graphics in Mass Effect 2 look better than Andromeda. But, you know what, Bex? We've only got 19 minutes left, and there was one other thing that I wanted to get in with you. I don't want to be on Mass Effect the whole time. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want to say about Andromeda before we kind of hit this other subject? If you want to play it, wait until it goes on sale. Yeah. That's a, that's a... <laughs> Which, it's already starting to go on sale, so it's not going to be long. It's next Steam summer sale. If they, I don't know if they'll sell it. They probably won't sell it on Steam. But if they did, it would be cheap. <laughs> uh, it went on sale two weeks after the release because it was doing so poorly. Um, yeah. Just real quick, the breakdown on numbers... They uh, sold it like to investors as a, like their prospectus was that the game will make at least nine million dollars, uh, or nine uh, nine billion, whatever. I can't remember. Well, I'm just gonna I say feel like billion sounds more right. Nine yeah, I'm gonna say nine billion, up. and then it ended up making nine point two, and it's like for the investors, like look, They're see, we <laughs> told you this, but it's like no, that game should have made. If that was like Mass Effect Three quality, it would have made thirty billion. Like, you know what I mean? It's severely <laughs> undersold, um, and so that's why it was already on sale two weeks after the release. But you mentioned Star Wars: The Old Republic. That was the other thing I wanted to talk to you. You're suffering from some MMO burnout lately, huh? Yes, very much so. <laughs> so what's going on? What's what's up, kiddo? Uh, well. Star Wars is doing this new thing with raids where they're only releasing one boss at a time. So after three years of no raids, pretty much, because um, the last raid, or two years, I don't remember when Shadow of Revan came out, um, we haven't had any raids. So they were like, okay, we're going to give you raids, but we're only going to give you one raid at a time. Um, so it's just like, I'm just getting... And there's still stuff, like, there's still Apex and then bosses that I want to kill and stuff like that, but it's just, like, all the really good players are leaving the game because they're bored with the game. So it's, like, hard to find teams that stick around and want to do content when everybody's like, okay, I'm, I'm burned, I'm burned, I'm burned, I'm burned, I'm burned, and they just leave the game. So I've been looking at other MMOs to try, but it's just, like, when I when I was in college, when I first started playing Knights of the Old Republic or Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic or Star Wars The Old Republic, um, I don't have that kind of time anymore to grind a character. Like that's a that's a super time sink. And I just every time I think about it, like I've tried to play ESO, I've tried to play WoW. Every time I think about the grind, I'm just like, fuck it, I'll just just drudge along in Star Wars because it's too much work. It's too much time. I don't have any more. Yes. It bumps me out. So, as you can see, Matt, who uh, we've been friends with, we, we met Matt in Star Wars The Old Republic. <laughs> Chance, Final Fantasy. Um, I, I have been playing Final Fantasy very casually. Like, very casually. And I'm about five weeks in. And I'm level 45, and I think the new high level is, eight, I'm going to say 80, because they just came out with the second expansion. Um, I have not yet gotten to the point where I've done any raids. I have no doubt in my mind, if I had played that game hardcore, I would be max level with at least two or three of the different jobs. Uh, one of the things that's really nice about it, oh, 70 Bisk says. Bisk also plays. Um, one of the things that's nice about Final Fantasy is you never make an alt. If you want to play uh, a tank, you just switch your job, and then you level the new job, starting at level 1. Um, mm -hmm. If you start out as a healer and you level all the way up to 70 as a healer, then you're level 70, and you start doing dungeons and raids and whatever. But if you're like, well, I want to play a DPS class, okay, then you switch over. You decide, well, I'm going to play an archer, which then evolves into a bard or i'm going to play a lancer which evolves into a dragoon or you you know whatever um and there and then once you get that class up to 70 you start gearing that class um and i watch lasane who is a regular friend and who you know from discord uh play quite a bit and uh it's really good. It, it, it's still got a lot of the mechanics that you're familiar with. Like, you don't stand in fire. 
you know, you you move out of you move when the boss does this, and you do when it does that. But the raids are only like eight people, which is actually seems small, but it actually feels very good because it feels like your interactions mean a lot more. I mean, eight people raids is what Star Wars is. Oh, okay. Did you forget that already? Oh yeah, yeah, I totally forgot it. I was thinking ten. Yeah, yeah I, 100% I think ten forgot. is wow. Yeah, um, it's good, and like I've been playing it super casually, but I'm actually like, actually, literally enjoying the leveling process when I play. Like I, I play it until I feel like not playing it anymore, which is usually about an hour or two, and then I stop playing. You know. And the thing, the thing that made the grind for me at least so bearable initially, besides the fact that I was in college and just doing whatever I wanted to do. Um, was the story of Knights of the Republic, which is something that it kind of boasts over at other MMOs, um, which, you know, as a, as you know, as like an in-game raider now, it's something I, I whine about because all the people in the forums are like, but what about the story? And I'm like, oh, where are my raids? <laughs> um, but like, it's true. It's true. It's like, the story is what got me into this game for a solid year that I played the game. I was just a stupid gunslinger wearing willpower armor just be booping around just because I wanted the story because it was it was a continuation of one of my favorite game series and that's something that I found lacking in you know there's you don't have really a fully voiced character like you do in like you don't just say huzzah and I need healing and stuff like that. You like have full conversations with companions and all kinds of stuff. So it's like, well, I will say, um, unless you speak Japanese, you're not going to get a lot of voice acting in final fantasy. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it does, it does sometimes feel like, uh, like you'll, you'll be reading the text that the NPC is saying mm -hmm. and then your character will go like this. <laughs> and then it's back to the NPC. And you're like, hmm, that's, that's my, that's my guy. But, yeah. but that being said, I feel like the story in Final Fantasy is amazing. Um, and again, we talked about this a little bit. I played a lot of Final Fantasy games growing up. Um, and it feel, this game feels like a Final Fantasy game. But you I said you never really. Game. I've never played the games, like, never been into the Final Fantasy series. So it's like, that's another thing that I'm just like, and I, it's, I do like anime stuff. So it's. And I, so I've heard that it's a very pretty game, and that's important to me. It is very... Uh, it, it is... It is one of the best-looking MMOs I've played. Um, Guild Wars 2 is also very pretty, but doesn't have quite the anime aesthetic. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, oh, man, it is... It is, like, the first time you get in there... Uh, the first time you, like, leave your starting city, and you're, like... I, I started out in this, like, pirate city called mm -hmm. Limsa Limosa. And then the first time I went out into the hills around the city, I'm like, just like kind of looking around. I'm like, wow. Oh, this place is fucking awesome. <laughs> and then you go to different zones and there's a transition between the zones. Like, okay, so you're in this zone and then you go to the next one and it looks a lot like the other one, but there's some changes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, then you go to the next one and that one looks like this one, but there's some changes. And they're feels like a natural transition between the zones where you actually almost feel like you're part of like you're playing through an actual world mm -hmm. whereas like um now in star wars it's kind of hard to describe because you literally get off and take off from a planet and go to another planet mm -hmm. so there's not quite you know but it's very jarring to go from hoth to tatooine you know mm -hmm. it feels like a different world which is sort of the intention whereas when you're running around eorzea one, if you're going from one zone to the next to the next to the next, it feels like a natural thing. Mm -hmm. And um, the one time that I experienced that there was a definite jarring transition between one zone and the next, it was because they were supposed to. Because there was, like, a massive apocalypse that happened in this zone, so the area was, you know, devastated. Okay. Like, so, that was, that was, that was done on purpose. And the zone previous to that when you looked in that direction, you could see that the sky was dark and there were clouds and the land started to get a little shitty right before you zone. I don't know. But anyways, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, I would, I, I would, I would definitely recommend that over ESO. 
Did you ever hear my ESO story? Um, I think I got a gist of it from the Discord chat, but not a hundred percent. So I'll try to TLDR it for you. And mind you, this wasn't beta, so they may have fixed this. I don't know the spoilers, but this immediately turned me off from the game. Now, going back to EverQuest, I played EverQuest back in '99, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that people would always laugh at you about is if you go up to an NPC and you'd try to talk to him, you would have to hit enter. And then if he'd say, hello, hero, I need you to bring me a bunch of carrots for my rabbit. And then like carrots would be in parentheses and you'd know that was like a keyword. So you mm -hmm. type in, what about the carrots, right? But if you didn't hit enter to open your text box, you'd hit W, H, A, and then the A was your auto attack key. So if you didn't hit enter to bring up your text box, you just started attacking the NPC, guards would rush in and kill you. And you die. <laughs> so I was used to that from EverQuest. But what happened to me in Elder Scrolls Online was I went through the tutorial, which was long and grindy and I didn't like. I land on the shores of the starter noob zone and I have to go talk to someone and I go to talk to him and I hit the key to talk to them. And right as I did, a guard walked in front of me and I ended up attacking him. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it up until this point. But what happens is you played Skyrim, right? Mm -hmm. Can so you, you know, if you attack guards, guard or... and talk to them, and they stand down. Yeah, but you know, in Skyrim, if you steal something, there's a bounty put on your head. Mm -hmm. Same thing in the SO. So a bounty got put on my head. I actually managed to run away, mm -hmm. and I went and sat on a rock. And your bounty timer ticks down. Of course, you can buy a. At the time, you could spend real life money to buy a a writ of clearance that would clear mm. your bounties for real life money. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, and again, this was in beta. It may have all changed. So I literally went and sat on a rock for 30 minutes, just moving every five minutes so I didn't AFK out, and just mm -hmm. waited for 30 minutes doing nothing. I swam back to shore because my bounty had cleared, but as soon as I landed, the guards attacked me and killed me. Because I guess they, I was still on their hate list, right? Even though yeah. the bounty was cleared. So I respawned at the um, graveyard, and now I've got a new bounty on my head that's double the price and will take an hour of in-game time for it to clear. I logged off uninstalled and haven't gone back to it since. Oh, uh, that's fair. <laughs> I was like, that's, this, shitty. that's some bullshit. Like, they killed me and I still have, I, like, I have an even bigger bounty on my head? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Plus, it doesn't... The, the combat in that never felt as great. You and I are used to that tab targeting, healing. Yeah. And uh, and ESO was more like a action MMO. You mm -hmm. know? But, I don't know. And I'm just gonna have to stick through it with Star Wars, I guess. I might try Final Fantasy, but I just don't know well, if I can do the grind. Uh, again, I mean, if you really want to grind... It, my suggestion would be... Log into Star Wars when you 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 know there's gonna be a raid going in your guild, and try mm -hmm. out a new game and you're when you're not raiding, you know. That's pretty much what I do now, except I've just been playing like. But I've also been just not in a super gaming mood recently. Anyway, I've just been kind of watching like Game of Thrones and Curb Your Enthusiasm and stuff like that because I got HBO. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, um, you know, Bob's Bob is technically playing Final Fantasy. It's summertime. Say, yeah, Bob's playing that, right? <laughs> yeah, Bob's playing it. Lorna says he would play it if more people played it. Bisk plays it. Matt plays it. I play it. Lassane plays it. Every one of Lassane's followers plays it. Basically, that's you know they that's why they follow her uh, because they're all Final Fantasy players. It is, it is a good game. I'd suggest giving it a shot. But then is it again... Is free? What? Is it free? No. It's nope. not free. Not free. <laughs> but well, you can buy just... There's not a free-to-play? To, there's, free there's like a seven-day trial. Okay. But, I mean... That's really not going to give me anything. No, you can... I mean, you can try it out. You can see how pretty the game looks. And then you can't send anyone messages. You can't group with anyone. It's like... How yeah. much is it? I think it's forty dollars for the base game. It's it's at which comes with a, Is there month. a monthly sub. Monthly sub, yeah. Shit. Yeah, 
Yeah. That's kind of, I don't like how that makes me sour. Sour taste. I know, I know. I feel it. I feel it. Believe me, when uh, I actually let my subscription expire, but then one of my uh, one of my viewers, one of my regulars, actually the very first subscriber and very first resubscriber to my channel, Myris Berg, uh, he's like, dude, you haven't played Final Fantasy in a week. I'm like, oh, my subscription ran out and I'm broke. He donated like $17. He's like, here you go. Go re-up. And I'm like, okay, I'll play it tomorrow. I'm like, I'll, I'll re-up tonight and I'll play it tomorrow for you, so... Uh, that was nice. Yeah, yeah, it was nice of him. And and again, I don't play it. I play it maybe three or four times a week for maybe an hour to three hours a clip. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm not hardcore. I just play it when I feel like playing it, you know. Um, but you might like it. And the healing in it feels very fun, too. Yeah, that's that's another thing. I haven't really gotten to do a lot of healing on ESO, but I've barely played it either, so it's... I don't know. We'll see what I do. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, we are just about out of time. Uh, and, like, I need to have special revs palavers when I know they're going to be more than an hour. Like, I'd be like, oh, <laughs> talking to Bex, it's going to be at least a 90 minute one because. We can ramble on for a while. <laughs> an hour doesn't feel like enough time with, with some people, you know? Yeah. And uh, I, I actually was really keeping a close eye on the time today because I was like, if you don't, you're going to look down and it's going to say 9.15, you know? <laughs> yep, um, pretty much. But is there anything else you wanted to uh, go over or talk about or maybe mention Kitley getting fat or anything like that? I can grab her really quick. and You don't have to, unless she's right there. She's right here. She's on the other chair. Oh, Kitley time! Say hi, baby. It's the kitty. Oh, hi. look at that kitty. Kitty. Oh. oh that, that pretty She's kitty. like, Mom, I was sleeping. Yeah, Camilla doesn't even come into the room anymore when she hears me talking to the computer. Because I've picked her up and showed her on stream so many times. She's like, no, nope, Dad's talking to the computer. I'm not going in there. Like, she, she'll go to her catio, and that's it. Like, she'll go through oh, the room. Oh, her but... catio. It's so cute. Yeah. Well, um, congratulations on the new move. Uh, congratulations on you and Vinsanity. Um, Twitch brought us together. <laughs> yes! Yes. It was all because of Twitch and my uh, weekly uh, Quick Flash games. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we started flirting with him in chat, and then... Yeah. Next thing you know, we live together. Next thing Crazy. you know, <laughs> eight months later, next thing you know. So, um, thank you so much. You know, I love talking to you. Um, I, and we'll, Time. we'll, we'll, we'll do this again in another few months. We, you and I chat every, what, two or three months, right? Yeah, pretty like much. This. I mean, we talk all the time in Discord. Yeah. Which, this yeah. is a good time to mention, those of you who aren't already on the Discord, Go down to the blah, blah, blah down below. Click on the Proper Nerds button. Uh, Proper Nerds Discord. It's a great community. We've got four featured streamers. Myself, Lysane, Rock and Rage, and Taintasaur. And then we got a bunch of just awesome people like uh, like Darth Bex here. Uh, so one last thing. Uh, this is the first uh, week of the new Revs Palaver interface. And uh, I got to say, I think it looks great. I like it does. The, you know, the cameras are bigger. And I'm pretty happy with it, so a good job thank you i spent like three hours on it the other night <laughs> i bet <laughs> yeah yeah so um well you know how this ends you know how I, this ends i get to say something right? you get the last <laughs> word and then we're gonna say good night um thanks for watching everybody make sure you watch rev and hopefully in a few weeks you can watch me talk to myself while i heal things or play new video games who knows That'll be decided later. But thanks for watching. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.